Hi guys, it's October here. This video is called Finding Community. And I wanted to share a little bit about what that means for me. Um, from when I was a young child, um, from probably around the ages of eight or nine years old, um, I started to realise that I thought a little bit differently, I was drawn to different things, I was a very nature-based child, I was very connected to the ocean, the moon, going for walks and meandering and uh, beachcombing and um, paddling in the sea and rock pools and stuff because I grew up in a fishing village. Uh, along from a lighthouse called Scourgeness or The Ness, known by locals. And I was quite a loner in the respect of that I enjoyed my own company because I kind of felt like none of the other kids that I knew in the street and area were into some of the things that I was drawn to and that kind of made me feel like I wanted to branch off on my own a lot because I wanted to go for walks and connect with nature and um, home in on little wee areas that I like to home in on and visit um, when I wasn't in school and the weekend and holidays and stuff. And I've got about a lot of memories actually from those times. And I kind of got used to being on my own that way and I kind of enjoyed being at one with nature on my own and taking everything in so that is how I kind of got used to that from a young age um I did not know I was a witch or even pagan until I actually discovered what those words meant as I got older. Like when you're young, you connect with things, you do things, you don't put labels on things. You just are, you just are into what you're into and are drawn to what you're drawn to. There's no labels attached, there's no like words attached. You're just, I like this or I'm drawn to that, which is what the case was. Now, when I was young, there was a couple of parks in our local area. Uh, being at a small village and then obviously the town of Montrose was across the South Esk River from me. Um, beside my primary school, which is where I walked to daily, uh, which was probably about a good mile anyway from my house, maybe a wee bit further than that. And across the, from there was a, a, a play park, like a swing park. It had the swings, climbing frame, all that kind of thing. And although I did go to that park sometimes, I didn't really like it too much. It was too busy, if you can call it busy back then. It wasn't really that, like it wasn't mobbed or anything. It was just, that's where most kids used to hang out. And I really didn't like the boisterousness of some of the kids that were there. Just being kids, but it wasn't for me. Well, there was one day I was walking and I'm going to put some pictures or a video clip in here. Basically, there was a park uh, underneath a place called the Ferry Den Vi Viaduct, which was opened in 1881, so it's quite an old viaduct. And basically, I would walk there, um, which was probably about a two-mile walk from my house. And you went underneath the viaduct and round the corner to... Um, what was a very small park, it wasn't even a park really, it was just a bit of grass with a big set of swings on it, like put up there by the council, it wasn't erected by anybody living in that immediate bit. And it overlooked um, towards a thing called the Montrose Basin Nature Reserve, so that was your view. So it looked towards which, which is now the... Um, Wildlife Centre, which is where people go to 
um, look at all the wildlife, including different birds, birds of prey, uh, all that kind of thing from that particular spot. So you could see across the water from where the swing was. Um, so I've written here, I've jotted a few things down. My favourite place to hang out as a kid, which was very quiet in the 80s. Most kids went to the bigger park across from the Ferry Down Primary School, which I've just said. But I preferred the solitude of the Viaduct Park. I could hear different birds and I watched the boats pottering and bobbing up and down in the water. It was full of wildlife and beautiful flowers, butterflies, bees, etc. I think that's where I first began to learn to unwind and release any built up stresses of the week and swing away in perfect solace until my little heart was content. And then in brackets I put my place for weight of the wind rituals before I knew what that even was. It was my way of unwinding. It was my way of um, blowing away the cobwebs of the week or the day or whatever was going on. And really, really loved it. Um, it was quite a magical place. And although it wasn't magical as in you could tell it was physically a magical place because it was just a magical place to me. And... I enjoyed that very much and again it was a place I went myself. Um also back then um I didn't have a computer or the internet or anything like that. So I learned from a certain age to go to the library and pick up books there. And also to go to a little second-hand shop, which I'm going to talk about in a second. And my first connections to others being into nature were authors. Um, I stumbled upon um, this quaint old bookshop set kind of below street level. Um, in a street called Murray Street, which is in the town of Montrose itself, so across the water from where I lived. Um, so I first came across it was when I was in high school. So I was probably about maybe 12 or 13 or something. And a friend and I used to go to a place called The Pantry and we used to have a baked potato and a juice for dinner um, in school break, lunchtime. And um, Montrose Academy was from there probably a good 20 minute walk, I would say. So I'd walk up the old steps past the big town hall and old church there. And this really, really old, old, old graveyard. And in through the town and up towards um, uh, this uh, place. And we used to go there for lunch. Anyway, there was one day we were coming out. And you, you kind of went up a little closey, a little alleyway, and the pantry cafe was on the left, and then on the right there was another door, and you went down steps, little steps, down into this other shop. And this was set slightly below street level, unlike the cafe, to go downstairs into it. And it was really old worldy. It was full of all different kinds of books from different uh, uh with different topics from different authors of all the more unusual type of things and when you walked into there and you walked down it was sort of darker set um it was dimly lit and um the man that owned it, well, I'm presuming he owned it unless he just worked there, used to always have incense going. So when you walked in there, you got the smell of incense mixed in with old books, and leather and paper and stuff like that. It was really lovely. Uh, I always said if you could get that smell on a candle, I'd be set or a perfume, which you actually can now. And um, I'm going to have to get myself some of those because... That kind of smells just right up my street. Anyway, that's where I first started 
am coming into contact with um, other people, so to speak, in author form that were talking about things that I was drawn to. So that's when I first started realising that um, certain things that I was into had a name, certain uh, things that I was drawn to meant something to other people and I wasn't just on my own. Uh, however, so I've now got um, umpteen books from that shop still and you could get like a big hard back book for like 50 pence or 25 pence uh it was just an amazing place as far as i'm aware now anyway uh both the pantry cafe and this old bookshop i can't even remember what it was called i think they're both now no longer there i think the pantry now has a mobile cafe and i don't think the actual pantry as a cafe stationary cafe is there anymore I don't think the bookshop's there anymore from what I remember from the last time I was in that vicinity. So what's this got to do with community? Well, it's it was my stepping stone into finding out more information about my interests and things that I was drawn to. And gradually that became the stepping stone that brought me to where I am now before I hit YouTube and everything, like before I started a YouTube channel or got involved with social media and any of that jazz, um, it was a eye-opener for me, as in it was a kind of a guide to uh, things I was showing interest in and putting that on paper if that makes sense so anyway um I then in my 20s I was kind of classifying myself as pagan if you want to put a name on something and then um I had an interest in all different cultures on all different um Uh, subject matter everything from moon phases to crystals to herbs and wildflowers to um all that kind of a thing and again I was getting books from this shop then I would go into Dundee and there was some old world kind of places there where I picked up some books from as well um, and then when I was 21, I moved through to Aberdeen, which is where Ali was born. And I still was connecting with paganism as a interest and a, a something that I read up on and connected with and everything else. Uh, it wasn't till I was in my... 30s I think I can't really remember to be honest with you um that I started really realizing that I was able to manipulate energies I was able to or work with energies rather I was able to um do certain things and and uh connect with certain things in a way where I started to think, wait a minute, you know, should I be connecting with the word witch or not, you know, because I didn't want to kind of say that if that wasn't the case. So it got to about, um, I can't remember what year it was, I started watching YouTube and I can't remember how I came about a certain channel. I might have been Lady Gravedancer, but I'm not sure. I was looking up something to do with incense and it, that's why I'm thinking it was tequila, because at the time it was um, her sharing how she makes her incense cones and stuff. I'm pretty sure it was. I might be wrong. Anyway, that was the that was the door opening for a whole plethora of channels 
where I started to think, oh my gosh, I didn't even know this was a thing, like all these channels being out there talking about things that I had an interest in. And over time, I really, really got into watching a lot of these channels and finally decided after um, I was teetering around the uh, subject matter of um, I felt like I was getting a calling from a deity that I didn't even know really at all. I didn't know uh, who uh, Morrigan was with regards to her lore or anything. And I remember asking a few people, you know, uh, about her and who, you know, who was this deity that was coming to me and and then when I got more information about that this was potentially what was going on and more signs kept happening and dreams and stuff like that, I then decided to go ahead and start my YouTube channel, which um, I called October Rain Rocks because October is my birth month. Um, rain rocks because rain does rock. I love the rain and I'm very storm oriented when it comes to weather particularly for magic uh, energies and stuff so I decided that that would be what I would do and my first video was sharing my very very first Morrigan second space uh, which has since grown arms and legs since then it was just a tiny tiny little space I had for her back then in my bedroom and now she has um two spaces um and other bits and pieces that are connected in with those spaces so with regards to community although i'm a solitary witch and although i prefer to be solitary in some respects um being on youtube opened a lot of doors it um brought about uh, me meeting some amazing people and people that I now class as family, sisters and brothers. And the community that is known particularly in the social media world, um, I used to have way more connections with the witchy community and kind of um, be more involved in the witchy community like a few years ago. But not so much now, although I am now obviously partaking in this uh, wonderful uh, collab channel as well as another one. And also um, I still connect with certain people on Facebook and YouTube. I watch their videos, I um, enjoy their videos, I comment and I subscribe to people that I enjoy. And that's as about as much involvement with the community as I have. Um, however, what I wanted to share was that I guess I'm quite quirky in my practice and I'm quite quirky in the way that I think and the way that I physically do things and the way I see things. So, um... I guess in the community, uh, people, everybody have their own way of connecting with deity. Everybody has their own like um, ways of practicing, crafting, and uh, expressing themselves. So all I wanted to say is never, ever, ever be frightened to be your authentic self. Never, ever be frightened or wary of being quirky and kooky and out there because if that's how you are, then embrace it. Embrace your weird, embrace your different and don't let anybody uh, dull your sparkle. Just be you, practice how you feel connects with you. And just 
don't be afraid to think outside the box. And that was my fear, you see, when I first started in the in the YouTube community particularly. I tried to blend in, I guess, maybe is the wrong word to put it. And that was just a mistake, really, because um I was I was because I'm that I used to be in solitary and in the way that I do things and grew up in that way and was used to my own train of thought I guess I thought if I am like this online then people are going to be like she's weird she's like you know she's really closed off and she's really um stoic in the way she thinks and so I thought I don't want to be people to be horrible to me really which was a mistake because I think that once I started doing videos and I got like a couple of years in I started to realise I am me and this is how I am and people are actually quite accepting of, of my weirdy ways and my differences and my my kind of unique outlook on things and my uh, kind of quirky nature or whatever. So it got to the point where I thought, I am just going to embrace every part of me. I am just going to embrace my wackiness, embrace my differences. And if people like that, grandioso. And if they don't, then they don't have to watch. And... Obviously, I'm still careful, cautious, and um, try to bring about topics that I find maybe interesting, that others may find interesting. Uh, locals connections with where I live, and try to keep things as fresh as possible. I used to share a lot of my um, my personal journeys. And I stopped that for a while because um, it was too personal. But so now I share certain aspects of my my um, personal relationships with deity. But I keep certain things private now. And that works very well. So I think that's about all I can say really. But. Just remember to just be yourself and uh, never ever be concerned about just being who you are and embracing all aspects of who you are and sharing and the way I look at it is I'm sharing on, on YouTube and on Facebook, etc. because I want to be able to help others and share with others. And particularly when I started on my path, it can be confusing, it can be daunting, it can be um, unnerving because you don't want to make mistakes and stuff. And you can't really make mistakes as long as you're respectful um, in certain areas. But like... There's not a wrong or a right way to practice anything. There's not a wrong or a right way to walk any path. You just have to be mindful, respectful and be you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Lots of love and I'll catch you next week. Bye.